So we decided that we were going to share our the probably the best mashed potato recipe in the world with everybody. This will be really quick and be really fancy and you'll be the hit of Thanksgiving. So here we go. Yellow potatoes. Got to have them. Probably four or five yellow potatoes per person. Peel them up. Because we eat a lot of pet mashed potatoes as a family. <laughs> yeah, we so eat. maybe three or four okay, for the normal person. Okay, three or four. Let's just go with four of these little tiny guys per person. Probably is a good way to, Is a good way to do a measurement of... If you're having a dinner party, how many potatoes do I make? Everybody thinks that every single time they make potatoes. How many do I make? Just make the whole bag? No. Do like four of these little guys a person. You might have a little bit left over, but somebody's going to eat more than the others. So we're just going to peel up real quick. There. We'll get rid of this yucky part because this is not keeper. Now you're going to cut them up into little tiny pieces. So I usually cut like that. Like that that and then chop 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 so you get a lot of little tiny pieces out of this one tiny potato they cook faster and you can get a lot more of the starchies off because that's that part doesn't let you have creaminess so we just take this one lonely little potato and add him to the rest of the potatoes that we already have going cool water let them soak for about a half an hour, get some of the starches off, because we're going to drain this water and it's going to be gone anyway. It's been 30 minutes. We have to drain these potatoes because we're not going to use this water. So I have my favorite colander and my favorite bowl that fit into each other. Find this. You're going to need it in a little bit. But right now we're just going to drain these potatoes through my colander and put them right back into the pan. Don't have to drain them forever. Just need to be mostly the water gone. Yes, we're gonna boil them in half and half. Believe me, this is perfect. I'm gonna open up my half and half. We use enough to cover your potatoes. Cover the taters. So this is a, it's a quart? Yeah, so I have a quart. That's usually enough just to cover the taters. And you squish them around a little bit just to make sure that they all fall in. And if it's not quite enough, see, you know, that's perfect for me. That's perfect for me. But if you made more potatoes, you could use a little bit of milk or a little bit of cream or a little bit more half and half if you have a bigger box. But you just want to be able to have enough to cover it. So now you know that one quart will cover, um, we're at two quarts in my stock pot right now. So this is two quarts level. So there you go. So I'm going to take my spoon. So I'm going to take my spoon. So I'm going to take my spoon <clears throat> and just make sure that everything's level. If you still see a few potatoes, that's perfect because it's gonna to start to bubble and everything's gonna get cooked very nicely. So right now, we're cooking it in half and half. And one half stick, for this amount of potatoes, I would use a half a stick of, I use salted butter for this one. I know there's a big salted and unsalted butter family out there. That, controversy. No, the controversy. But I'm not going to add any more salt to this right now, so I'm just using salted butter, and then we can taste it later, so it'd be great. So I'm going to put that in there, too. I'm going to get rid of this, because now my fingers are covered with butter, and I have to wash my, I have to rinse my fingers off real fast. So there you go. This is a pan of yellow potatoes cut into cubes about this big. This was a quart, ended up making two quarts of potatoes and half and half, and a half a stick of butter, salted butter. Now we have to add, I'm going to save that one for later. And now we have to add, what we like to add is white pepper. 
because then you don't get the little flakes or the little flecks of color. I just use that and I probably did, I'm a sprinkler because I've been baking for and cooking for a really long time so I can kind of get a, an idea of how much I have. But I probably use two, tape, two teaspoons tops of uh, white pepper. So there goes my yummy. About a half an hour to get these things done. So we're going to turn it on to probably a medium to medium high heat. I'm going to go probably about right there. Um, you, if you've never made mashed potatoes before, you take a fork and when you can go into the potato and it kind of wants to fall apart but not quite, that's when your potatoes are done. You go until you get this. See that? Didn't fight back, didn't fall apart. I want to eat it right now, but I'm not going to. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Make sure you have a colander that fits into a bowl. I'm going to take this. And pour all my taters out. This part doesn't matter. You don't have to swish it out or anything. Because what you're going to do is this. Yummy. That's yummy goodness dripping right there. That's, oh, that's creamy goodness. I'm going to put it back in here. Okay, they can go away. This is now the milk that you usually use to make your mashed potatoes. But it's already been cooking so beautifully. I have to get this. So you start doing, now I have my squisher. Love my tater squisher. Everything is lovely. Squish. Squish everything down just a smidge. Doesn't have to be a whole bunch before you start pouring in the stuff. Now you're going to take this lovely half and half in butter and you use that like your milk. Probably have to do this on fast speed, right? So this is going to take a couple of minutes. Probably. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Now you take a little bit more. I'm not going to be so gentle this time because I'm kind of vigorous when I make my mashed potatoes. So I'm going to be a little bit more, a little bit meaner my mashed potatoes to get them the first squish on everything is really important swish it around a little bit if you've got your first squish on all the potatoes and you didn't you didn't miss one you don't want to miss one big potato on your mashed potatoes. That's no fun. And this is just to taste and for visuals. You use it until you look like you're looking at the mashed potatoes that you want. And in our case, we don't use a mixer because we really like we're kind of lumpy mashed potato people. No, I would never use a mixer. That's you not right. You want to taste the goodness of the potato. Yeah, my grandma taught me to use a smasher, and I always will use one of these. I will never use my mixer to make my mashed potatoes. But I know a lot of people like that. But my grandma and my mom always make them this way, and that's the way that I am. Look at that, how beautiful that is. So silky. It's got a little bit of lumps in it, which you want. 
a little bit of lumps. I think I need a spoon. Oh, I can use this fork right here. I'm going to taste it right now. That's so yummy. Even without gravy, you don't need gravy. You can drizzle a little bit of sauce. Which we're going to do later. Yep. We'll get into that some other time. I'm going to take some more. I have to go like this. I'm going to take another bite. But yes, we're going to drizzle a sauce over the top. You can use gravy. You can eat them plain. All is well. These are perfect. You can always add a little bit more salt or pepper to your taste, but... Mm. That was so good. Yummy. Mm. Oh, that was so yummy.